All right, guys, so we are in the healing section. If you can notice here, this um, older gentleman here has a lot of wrinkles. And another thing I just wanted to show you is you can actually clone from one image to another. So if I wanted to, I could actually start cloning in another eyeball, but I'm not going to do that. Let's actually go over to the new tool that we're going to use, which is the healing tool. Now the spot healing tool kind of figures things out for you. It's nice. We'll get into that a little bit later, but let's start off with the healing brush tool. So just like we had with the um, cloning tool, the healing tool um, does a lot of similar things, but what it does is it kind of copies the texture as opposed to the texture and the color here. So if I hold down option here, and I'll just bring this over, I can start bringing kind of that nicer uh, section of his cheek and the color is being simulated over here. And just to kind of give you an idea, let's use the texture of his mustache right here. And if I were to put that on, and we'll make this a little bit bigger, his shirt, you can see that it changes the color to match the shirt, but it brings in the texture of the mustache. This of course works better if you're doing stuff on that's a similar color or something like that, but you can do this throughout. So I'm just going to go through and um, hold down the option key once again, and then I'll resample, and then I can just kind of keep bringing this in. Now, one of the things that happens with this is um, if I get rid of all the wrinkles, this one of the things that makes him really cool and really interesting is all of these wrinkles. And that is a, um, you know, that's kind of taking away all of his character. But if I just want to lighten it up a little bit, I can do a technique to fix that. This is destructive. So you can see here, I can't undo it. Everything there is the same. I don't have a separate layer. So I'm going to click on my little history section here and go back to the point for where it's open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Now, if I tried to use this healing brush on the new layer, it might not work. It will, though, if I make sure that I've got sampling of all layers or current layer and below selected. Now, even though I'm on a new layer, I can sample from here and I can get rid of all of those wrinkles. And now I'm going to just go through this really quickly. I'm just going to do half of the face. One of the problems you can see is because I'm kind of re-cloning the same area over and over and over again, the skin is becoming a little bit patchier. So, yeah, this isn't the perfect solution. Usually this is a little bit better for just getting rid of maybe one or two things. And you need to be careful with this because you can kind of get a little, a little bit clone crazy or a little clone happy. Whoops. There's a little bit of an eye there. Um, so whenever you're doing this, just be careful. Um, it might look really good to you at first, but as you go more and more with this, you might start losing judgment as to what is working and what isn't working. All right, same thing here, and once again, don't want to get rid of all. We normally wouldn't want to get rid of all of the wrinkles because older people have wrinkles. Even babies have wrinkles. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go a little bit overboard just to kind of show you some matter. And once again, I'm just doing one side of the face here. Something to be careful of is if you go over to the side, you can see if I, as I get closer to this hat, it's going to bring a little bit of the hat in. So we want to be really careful with that. Right on borders sometimes it's often good to use a little bit more of the clone stamping tool. All right, so this doesn't look too bad. It is looking pretty splotchy. And I'm going to show you guys a way to kind of get rid of that. And I'll just do the rest of the face here really quickly. And see that this is also kind of a nice way sometimes to get rid of a little bit of stubble if it's around or just kind of lower the stubble. All right. So I've done roughly half of the face here. Go really far with this, which we shouldn't, but 
you can get rid of that. All right, so we've gotten rid of all the wrinkles on half of the face. You can see, turn this on and off, and then this is what we've actually done. Um, so one of the nice things we can do is if we go to opacity, we can bring some of those wrinkles in, but make them a little bit less apparent using that opacity. So before and after. But once again, I think one of the things that really makes this image work is the wrinkles.